So Tanya, for the woman who's going to watch this and she is either a curious or concerned about how much spousal support that she's going to be entitled to, um, or maybe she's concerned about how much she might have to pay. Um, right. Based on the fact that she makes, she knows that she earns more income in the relationship. Right. How do you get a sense of what that number is? Okay. Well, um, you know, with spousal support, which is, which is different from child support because child support, we have a child support worksheet, which is a calculator and you put in the wife's income, the husband's income, um, daycare, medical expenses, private school, et cetera. That is a finite number that is calculated by the child support worksheet or the calculator. Now, spousal support is based on uh, need, ability to pay, length of the marriage, um, what caused the breakup of the marriage, and it is completely within the discretion of the court. So that's pretty serious. And there's a couple of different types of spousal support, okay? Um, let's say someone in a scenario like you that they've been married for a number of years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, that particular woman is going to want spousal support for life or until she uh, gets married again, <laughs> whichever comes first. I had one lady, she had been married 35 years right. and I had her a very nice spousal support package and she met some man and she was like, girl, he's worth it. I was like, okay, girl. <laughs> so, you know, if they get remarried, it stops. But there's lifetime uh, alimony um, or spousal support. Those are the same thing, okay? Um, or there is alimony that you may ask for for a certain period of time. So let's say if you were married somewhere around um, 10 years, the likelihood of the woman getting spousal support for the rest of her life um, are not great. Um, I would typically ask for spousal support, at least for the length of the marriage. And I'd ask for more than I'd expect to get. Right. So depending on the husband's income and the need, and I can figure out the need a little bit from the lifestyle that they've lived, okay. because the main reason why the woman wants the spousal support is she wants to maintain the lifestyle, the at lifestyle. least for a certain, at least for a certain period of time. Right. So for instance, um, depending on what the scenario is, I may ask for spousal support for uh, 10 years at $5,000 a month, or I may ask for what's called rehabilitative uh, alimony for a short period for a shorter marriage. Let's say you were married for four years, um, but then when you got married, you, you, you were already working before you met your husband. When you got married, he wanted you to basically quit your job right. and do things around the house or quit your job and take care of the children and the kids. Right. But, but you have a degree and you have skills, but you've kind of been out of the work game for a minute because you've been, you know, taking care of the household, the home, the kids. Some people do that and they don't even have kids. You know, the, the man wants them to take care of the home. So I asked for rehabilitative alimony, which is a certain amount. Again, I'll just pick a number typically higher than I expect to get for a certain period of time. So if you've been married four years, I may ask for spousal support in the amount of $2,000 a month for four years. That's rehabilitative so that the woman can get time to get herself back acclimated, back into the workforce, back doing whatever she's qualified to do. Um, so it's a little bit, I wouldn't say nebulous, I would say fluid. It, it depends very specifically on the facts and circumstances of the case. So there's not a cookie cutter for spousal support. Now, ladies, if you are the breadwinner, we are not trying to pay this man money. I, it's hard for me to fathom allowing, see, we're so supportive. So sometimes we will allow our husbands to go get a degree. Okay, so I'm, I'm working. I'm right. going to let you go get a degree and I'm going to be uh, taking care of the children. The and wife. then I'm going to allow you to kind of get yourself together. Then of course he gets himself uh, together and something happens. We, we need the divorce. We got to have it. But what you can't do is just allow this man to kind of not contribute. Um, if possible, you can't force someone to have a job, but he can't force you to stay married either. Okay. Only one side needs to want the divorce. It's not mutual. So he may ha have a great life living under you and you're taking care of everything. Um, so 
you know, you're going to have to pay some support. Now, I will tell you, uh, there is not a judge that will admit this, but I will tell you that I've seen cases and I've had cases where men have wanted spousal support and it's harder for them. Um, just because they're a man and depending on the judge, judges bring with them when they have discretion, their own personal beliefs Absolutely. and prejudices, you right, know, for sure. Yeah. Um, so if you're, a, if the man is seeking spousal support, it may be difficult, but it is certainly not impossible. I got a man, uh, spousal support before, but it's much less. I think if the tables were turned, you know, it would have been a greater award, but you have to, before you, before you file for divorce, you got to kind of start pulling back on some of these expenses that you're allowing him to run up. For instance, maybe stop paying his credit card, particularly if it's in his name and not yours. Put your foot down. My goodness. Say, you know what? I am not going to keep paying this credit card and you're running it up and doing whatever you want to do. I'm going to stop. You need to get a job. You know, it might be some fireworks, but you've got to, you know, slowly kind of cut some things off before you right. file. If you can stand it, some people are like, mm -mm, I got to file now, but you can't sit here and pay for everything right. and then force and then expect him to right. not get anything. Now, um, adultery is a bar to alimony. Okay. So let's say he's committing adultery, but okay. you're taking care of him. I need you to have some good hard evidence. Now, most people think, well, you got to catch him in the act. No, you don't have to catch him in the act per se, but you can again, um, you know, make your case for him cheating by his behavior. And maybe you have some, you know, receipts or something, or maybe he stayed out overnight or he's some got proof. a pattern. Right. right. There's certain behaviors that lead one to conclude uh, that there is an affair going on. So what, what I hear you saying is um, if a woman is the primary breadwinner um, and her husband who would like spousal support he is cheating. Yes. That if he is cheating, that means that he is not entitled to spousal support. Is that what I hear you saying? Yes. Now she would have to allege in her complaint for divorce adultery. All right. And, ha and have some evidence. Right. So yeah. Yes. You, now you, you can't just say it. You, you're going to have to be able to prove it. You can't just say it. Right. You can't prove the act, but you can prove from the behavior that is going on. Now, let me tell you something. There's a difference between like there may be some spousal support on a temporary basis while the divorce is pending. Right. OK, so um, that's not sometimes that you got to make your case. So sometimes you may have what's called a rule nice eye hearing where you have a hearing to set things up on a temporary basis while the divorce is pending. Now, if you've got your good, strong evidence, then which of course I recommend gathering your evidence before filing, you know, you could prove that and then very likely he won't get anything. A judge will say, sir, you need to go get a job. Um, but there may be some times when maybe you don't have all that proof there. There may be some on a temporary basis, but you know, if you're the breadwinner, let's get that private investigator to get that information we need, you know, because we are not going to be paying uh, someone to cheat on us. Right. No, we're sure. not. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> so Tanya, let, let's set expectations here. So let's assume a woman has followed your, your advice. Mm -hmm. um, she has been very intentional about gathering all the information, collecting everything. Um, mm -hmm. She is a, she is your organized client. You know, you, you'll give her a gold star because you're so pleased with her. Right. Uh, assuming, assuming that she's got her stuff together can you give us an idea of about how long an average divorce takes? Assuming again, they're, they're organized. All right. Now let's assume she got all her stuff together. and She hadn't changed her mind because let me tell you what men do when we gather our stuff and they somehow figure out that we got our stuff together. Oh my God. They get rid of the girlfriend and the love affairs start. And here are the flowers. He's treating oh you just God. like he did. When he met you, oh, I have these divorces where the lady has the most beautiful slam dunk case, honey. We are, we about, to, oh, it's about to be on and popping in court. Yes, we are excited over in my office. We got our exhibits. Next thing I know, the client called and said, oh, girl, I slept with my husband. Oh, my God. <laughs> you have now condoned his adultery. You have mm -hmm. condoned it. You have killed our case. 
So I, I, I need, we need to, we're going to have to sit here. I need her to not minute. sleep with her husband, first of all. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is once we've accused him of adultery, we're filing, it is, it's imperative that we um, do not have any sort of relations with our spouse. Is that what I'm hearing you say? I can't make it any clearer than that. Do not. <laughs> You are not in a bona fide state of separation if you are intimate with your husband. Mm. That looks like reconciliation to a court. To me, yes. It sounds like it to me too. Mm. Yes. And so please don't think it's casual. Well, I just wanted to do it one more time before. No, you just condoned all of that awful maltreatment that you suffered. So again, you know, I know you, you want the question to go one way, but I had to tell you, these are the snafus that come up in real life. These women get weak because we still love this man. Um, and mm -hmm. so if he realizes, I mean, I had a case, oh, so good with the, with the adultery. And then the woman and her husband, you know, he's smart. He starts sleeping with her. He tells her that, yes, we're going to, I'm going to call my lawyer and I'm going to dismiss my counterclaim because, you know, we're the plaintiff. And right. she called up and she says, oh, dismiss the divorce because we're back together. I said, well, hold up. When, when, a, when a woman comes in and tells me to dismiss her divorce, that is not what I do. I said, wait a minute. Let's give this a few days. I said, and has he contacted his attorney as well? Because listen, you can dismiss your divorce. But if he filed an answer and counterclaim, the case will go forward on his counterclaim. Okay, I'll say that again. I'll say it again. Mm. When you file for divorce. File for divorce. You file. Your mm -hmm. husband serves. He files an answer and counterclaim. Right. You, you say not, this. You said this, but now he's saying, uh-uh, no, it's this. Yeah. Right? So, yes. So, he's saying what he wants out the divorce. He filed Absolutely. a counterclaim. Absolutely. Please don't sleep with him and come in and tell me to dismiss your divorce. I am not because unless he dismisses his counterclaim, First. you can dismiss your mm -hmm. divorce, but the case will go forward on his counterclaim. On his counter. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in that scenario where the woman had all the ducks in a row and we right. just we we had the best evidence. I'm not even gonna tell you how good, it, but it was good. It was ooh, it was good. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, that man said, you know what? Hmm. Let me get let me get this together. Next mm -hmm. thing I know, he's treating her good, and she's like, "Oh, it's just like old times." I'm shaking my head. Uh, and then she she, t she says, "Dismiss the divorce." We contact his attorney. His attorney had not heard from their client at all. In fact, his attorney said that the husband wanted to see what her discovery was before he dismissed his counterclaim after he slept with this woman a few times. Right. Oh my God. So really, please do not fall for these tricks, ladies. Yeah. We cannot engage in war with our heart. Right. We have to engage in war with our mind. That's why I say, you know, make your mind up and stick with it. If you Absolutely. know that, you know, this is an unhealthy relationship for you, you really need to get out because men know how to manipulate us and they know that we love hard and they know if we love them once, they always feel like there's a potential for us to love them again. All right. But let's say we got a lady who got her stuff together. She's got all her information. We got our facts. We ready to go. So again, with the divorce, how long will it take? Well, yeah. it depends on how hard he is fighting gotcha. and what okay. he's fighting for. What he's fighting for. Oh, okay. Yes. Because one thing that causes a divorce to go a long time is a fight over the children, mm. the custody of the custody. children. Okay. Custody. Yes. Okay. Um, because custody, we can get into um, a guardian ad litem being mm. appointed to investigate both parties, parties uh, yeah. talk to teachers, uh, talk to doctors, talk to people that you recommend and then they have to do this investigation, talk to the children, see the children with mom, see the children with dad, make a recommendation to the court as to what would be in the best interest of the children as far as a custody relationship. And you will have men who have never even been to a game, a doctor's appointment or to the school, all of a sudden become dad of the year because they do not want to pay child support. Right, right. 
that right. really makes a case go a long time and they will start. And, and I will tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth right here. Mm-hmm. I have represented a husband okay. who worked all the time and never did anything with the kids. Uh, the wife filed for divorce. You know, I told him everything to do to be daddy of the year. He's, he changes his work schedule. Um, he's at, every, he's not just at the games, he's at the practice. He's going to the school, having right. lunch with kids, just willy right. nilly. You know, he's doing all these things. Right. I ended up getting that man custody. And those children were in elementary school. Wow. Um, so ladies, please don't sleep. Continue to be mommy of the year. You've always been that. You've always been You know, let year. dad have his role, but you continue to, don't put it off on him. Say, I'm, I'm oh, I need a break. No, continue to be active and involved because watch out, the trickery goes on and these divorce cases. I'm not saying that was trickery, but you know, it was strategic. Right. And and so what it sounds like, Tanya, it sounds like as the divorce proceedings are going, sounds like the child support case is also going simultaneously or does one, you have to finish one before you start the other. How does that work? It is all simultaneous. And one thing about family law cases, divorces, Um, You have all the evidence and facts that occurred before the divorce, but you create additional facts and information as the case is pending. That's what makes the family law case a little bit different. So understand what I like to do with people is I like to give my clients a couple of code sections, depending on what's going on in the divorce. I like to give them uh, OCGA 1993. That's the child custody statute in Georgia, because it outlines the factors that the court has to consider in making a custody award. I also give them uh, 19615, uh, which is the uh, child support statute, so that they understand what things can be considered uh, support. Um, So it's important, not only do you have to be strategic prior to filing the divorce, you have to be strategic every day of that divorce until that final judgment and decree is entered, or until a settlement agreement is signed and filed. I will tell you about 70% of the divorces end in some sort of settlement agreement, but that's after we've been through thorough and sifting discovery. So if there's not a big fight over children, the other big thing is assets. So if there's not a big fight over children and assets, we're still looking in a contested divorce because we've got to go through the discovery process, uh, six to eight months, I would say. Okay. Six to eight months. And this is a contested divorce where we're gathering the evidence. Right. Uh, usually once uh, discovery has been exchanged, people are required to participate in mediation. Okay. A lot of cases settle either in mediation, come up with a partial agreement with mediation or settle after the mediation. Because even though you go to mediation and it's not 100% successful, there's still the opportunity to uh, resolve certain issues because at mediation, that's when you you know, really get to learn the other side's position and some of the evidence, even even mediation is strategic um, because you have to decide what information to share to try to get the case settled and what information maybe not to share just in case we have to go in court and handle our business. Um, So the whole thing is a strategy from day one. And, you know, you have to, it's kind of like playing chess, but you know, I was a computer scientist undergrad so we had the if then else clause i use that in 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 divorce too because if he does this when we do that then we're going to do this else if he does something else then we do this you have to stay i would say uh two to three moves ahead i if we can try to stay five moves ahead if we do this he'll do that and then we'll do this and then he'll do that and then we'll do this that's how i like the plan Right. So this is what I think I hear you saying. Number one, regardless of the state that you live in, it's really important that you know your state's laws, statutes related to child support. You need to know your state's laws and rules related to custody, because, again, those are those are going to be your big issues. Um, And the other thing that I hear you saying is don't get weary. Right. But also. You got to know the state's laws as it relates to uh, alimony. And then the other big issue is Mm -hmm. division of assets and debt. Division, okay. Okay. Uh, Assets and debts, okay. Yeah, you know, a lot of women just want to divide the assets and don't want to divide the debts. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we like, I don't don't want that. I just just want the money. 
And I yeah, don't want to pay for nothing. I don't want to pay for that. nothing. Okay. Yes, but that's not the law. <laughs> you know, and so like that's a that's a hugely important issue, division of assets and debts. In Georgia, we have an equitable division um, law, meaning what's fair. The judge will look at, you know, what contributions were made by various people, um, you know, what contributions to the family. I had a situation where a woman had been out of the house for a, a decade. And even though the house was in both names, the husband had been paying it all that time. So uh, the judge didn't give her 50-50 of the proceeds of that. They did order the sale as she wanted, but they didn't give her 50-50 because he reduced the principal of the mortgage for 10 years by himself. That's 120 payments you didn't, you didn't right. do. That you didn't do, right. So it's, you know, it's equitable in Georgia. However, you got a state like California where it's 50-50. Period, right. Period right. with a dot, okay? Right. So um, you got to think about that too because we're not just talking about the kids and the child support and stuff. We are talking about who is going to stay in the house. Mm -hmm. What about these cars? Uh, what about these financial assets, retirement accounts. So ladies, we're going to divide his retirement accounts, but guess what? We're going to divide yours too. So when someone comes into my office and they are contemplating divorce, I ask them, are you contributing right now to a 401k, um, IRA, uh, 403, any of these things? If so, stop. Why stop? Because it's marital. Right. So if you want to, if you want to put $2 in and, and you okay with giving him giving $1. Him one. Right. That's, right. That's fine. Right. Um, I tell them to stop until the divorce is over mm. because you have to be strategic. You can't sit up here and continue to build an asset during a divorce that you got to divide with this man. Or if you don't have to divide it, then he's going to get credit for his portion that will offset on your portion of one of his assets. So then we get into the math. So the math is very important in these divorces and we got to look at that too you know because like let's say for instance you are the breadwinner ladies and you file joint returns but you all owe for taxes right. um, please don't think the court is necessarily going to split that tax debt 50 50 right um when you made most of the money when you made the majority or, of the oh my money God, right. you made all the money right right so there may be some kind of offset there with mm -hmm. other assets but listen they divide assets and debts. So it's important to know your rights and know what the assets are. For right. instance, mm -hmm. if you know that your husband has a, a plethora, a portfolio of rental properties, I need you to know the addresses for these properties. At least know the county that they're in. I get women that come in and say, well, my husband's got property. I'm like, where? Because we could do a, a title search. That's easy. They can't but take not, the county. But we can't we can't do a title search for 159 counties unless you <laughs> now if you, pay, now if you pay me to do that, I will. Right, right. But I need you to so when you gathering up all this stuff about bank accounts and stuff, know about these assets too. I'm not talking about just cars and, and stuff like I'm talking about intangible assets. The bank accounts, yes. Uh, but also where's that retirement account? Where are those where are those real properties? Uh, he owns three businesses with these partners. Businesses are, are divisible in a divorce. So yeah. if your husband started a business right. while you were married, I or I can tell you that they a portion before and you helped him to build it, okay, there's going to be a premarital portion and a marital portion that we're going to divide. All right, so the math gets a little intense in these divorces, and you've got to gather all of that kind of information too. What are all the assets, all the rental properties, all the businesses? Right. Are there any assets that are excluded? Any assets? Premarital yeah. assets are excluded, of course. Just if premarital assets. Okay. Uh, if they're 100% premarital, of course, if there's a prenup, mm -hmm. you can exclude. Um, all assets, whether they were bought during the marriage or after the marriage, if they're in uh, that party's name alone. Uh, typically, if uh, an asset is in both names, it's going to be divisible. Now, some people enter into these prenups and they just they just waive it all. So a prenup can really only talk about um, assets, debts, and um, spousal support. A prenup, you can't decide who gets custody or what the of the children, you know, right? You know, 
all those issues are typically, so judges decide custody. Okay. Judges and or a jury can decide child support. Okay. So okay. who who needs a prenup? So you need to be at what income or asset level for it to be, you know, pertinent for you. Well, it's 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 important. Like if you like, let's say if you're if you have a lot of assets, and you are marrying, just if you have a lot of assets, you're married. What's a, a lot? But what's a, a lot? lot? Well, I, well, I'm saying not like just a just a regular house, or even even if your house, even if you have just your house and your car. Okay. But you've worked hard and you like, I'm getting married and I don't want to split. We're going to move into my house. Mm-hmm. I don't want to split my house. I don't want to split my retirement. I don't want to split these things. You could have your basic, you know, you work hard and you've got some assets. So it doesn't, you know, any assets you don't want to divide, you know, sign, get a prenup if you can. I've done prenups for some ladies. Yeah. I sure have. I've done yeah. postnups too. Right. A postnuptial agreement. Yes. So. Um, you need to spell that out, but the, um, you know, I don't want us to negate the, the, the importance of the division of assets and debts. That's huge. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I don't want, you know, I don't want, you know, a prenuptial agreement to be, you know, a bad word. You know, I do. I, I don't think it's a bad word. It's, no. Now, if you, if you have some, you know, some, you have a really high net worth, you really need to For sure. have, you know, if you're you're getting into a marriage and you have like some kids before and some other stuff right. or whatever, right. I think you really, really need a uh, prenuptial agreement. You also, of course, sure. need a, a last will and testament. And depending on the value of your estate, you may need an estate plan. Right. Um, um, and, and Tanya, yeah. I've also heard about women who have inherited, you know, whether it be real estate money or whatever from, you know, parents, grandparents. If you, um, obviously that was, they acquired it before, but if you inherited that during your marriage, you don't want that to be subject to a divorce. Well, typically it's not. Oh, it's not. Uh, Okay. Typically it's not, but you got to watch how you use it. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a crazy case right now where, um, um, the, the client's uh, mom passed away and, and left a house, but the other spouse is trying to say, well, we use this together in our marriage for thus and so. I made contributions, so now I want part of that house, mm. part of the equity in the house. So. Right. so just watch how you use inherited assets in your marriage. Keep it separate. To keep it separate. Understood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 